This is Mohammed Iqbal Singh here to tell you about Insta Pure by Water Wonders. If you're tired of the taste and color of water you're drinking from your tap, worried about the gist of parasites or toxic effluent finding its way into your drinking water, then you need Insta Pure from Water Wonders. It's portable, it's convenient and it's 100% guaranteed to take the most polluted water and purge it of all impurities and poisons, leaving you clean, clear, sparkling liquid. That's the way nature intended. Just pour that foul sludge through the fist-sized Instapure canister and you'll be amazed at what emerges from the other side. Keep your unit fully charged for best results and always use under well-ventilated conditions. Remember, 100% guaranteed purity. Insta Pure. Purity is waiting for you. Located in our hidden warrens far beneath the city, WRAT squad of intrepid reporters infest the city, unseen and unlooked for. Combined with the magic of video, we are the eyes and ears of this metropolis. And we're here 24 365 for you. <laughs> Following his virtual plunge into the ocean depths earlier today, Gregory Estefan has emerged into the grim and bleak mayhem of Suiston under siege, and reports that on reflection Poseidon's realm was more forgiving than he thought. Gregory, can you tell us where you are? Well, Helen, I am afraid, like many who were entirely unprepared for this weather, I am trapped in an unlikely and probably unsustainable location, hoping the predictions are wrong. I began making my way towards the subway at about 2 o'clock, but the flash chaos that hit the streets up here in Suriston North turned the 20-minute walk into an insane scramble, a mad, uncontrolled rush for the tunnel system that left many trampled and unable to help themselves. I've never seen such instantaneous panic. And I couldn't just push and shove past these helpless people and leave them there to die. So I and two or three other like-minded citizens took it upon ourselves to help pull the victims into shelter of a sort. We spent the last hour and a half scouring the streets in our area and rescuing those we could, and were holed up on the second floor of a celestial department store, near where the nurse's station is, so we have access to first aid supplies. Have you had no contact from the authorities? The SSO? Military? We've kept tuned to WRAT the whole time, so we know what's going on. But otherwise, no. We've had contact with only ordinary citizens and most of those totally focused on their own survival. So how many are you in this store? How many did you rescue and what's their health status? I'd say about 200 all told, Helen. Over 100 injured. The worst of those injuries would be broken arms or legs, a couple of concussions. We don't have anyone here with better medical training than I do, so I can't really give you a complete analysis. But some are in a bad way, and the best we've been able to do is make them more comfortable, administer painkillers, and show them someone cares. What's the intersection, Gregory? Nearest city cam. City cam 1188 scans the street outside the store, but the store also has its own internal security cams. You should be able to connect with them. And we're near the corner of Albright and Talbot. We'll see what we can do to get you some medical help, Gregory. I'm sure there are pockets of survivors like yours all over Suiston, but we can only help those we know about, so... Helen, there's more. You need to know what we're up against here. Some of the others... Rick, they're coming again! More this time! Shit, they've blown the windows. Take charge of the east stairs, Janet. Put Allison on the west. I'll hold central. Helen, we're under siege. I'll report back. Very appropriate to our present struggles, the Raging Bull's classic Typhoon speaks to our need for calm in the face of the storm.
Daniela Gresham has finally called back in from the Suiston South Supermall with an update on the hostage situation. Daniela, can you tell us what's happening? I guess you could say all hell has broken loose inside the Supermall enclosure, Lana. The apostles who kidnapped the mayor have been as good as their word. A few minutes ago at 4.30, all power to most of the mall's systems was cut. We're under emergency lighting conditions only at this point. I'm guessing they were able to tap into the main power feed somehow from within the wave pool control structure. And as you can probably hear, they also began setting off a number of small explosive charges which must have been previously set. They've been going off in a pre-planned sequence, destroying certain targeted locations. The main operations center atop the main shopping tower structure took the worst of it. I've seen at least three explosions up there in the past five minutes. I hope it had been evacuated before these bombs began to go off. Have you any idea what the kidnappers have done with the mayor through all this, Danielle? It seems to me they've accomplished what they set out to do, making an example of them all. Do they really need the mayor anymore? Apparently yes, Lana. They do need him, as they've set up a defensive perimeter across the entire boundary of the wave pool area, and are now waging a gun battle with police. Suist and security forces have three or four squads invested here, and from my viewpoint up here, I feel like I'm watching a live fire match. Where exactly are you, Daniela? When I ran from that apostle, I dodged into a thick set of bushes near the very edge of the dome structure to avoid him. But he was wearing a really good ocular system, and I knew he'd find me sooner or later. I spotted a section of the inner framework for the dome that was designed to allow repair crews to access the upper dome in case of emergencies. Too high for ground-based hydraulic lifts. The access rungs were conveniently set on the upper edge of a main framing strut, concealing the climber from anyone on the ground. So, now I'm up here, maybe 60 meters above the wave pool area, watching it all unfold. Daniela, we might have guessed you'd be somewhere up in the rafters. Strapped in again, I hope? Of course, Adam. And with the headset zoom, I've been able to pick out the activity at the very south wall of the mall enclosure. Where they're still guarding the mayor and three of his bodyguards. Looks to me, though, like they're getting ready to leave. Transferring prisoners to what look like military ground skimmers. Very sleek and solid. I'd say they'll be ready to leave within the next five to ten minutes. Probably time to coincide with a specific series of explosions that'll distract the SSF squads. Unless the squads can break through before then, pretty hard to do with that wave pool in the way. All the apostles need to defend is a narrow strip of ground on the south side of the water. Then again, maybe the SSF are smarter than I give them credit for. Looks like they've targeted the marshalling area with stun grenades. From what I can see, everyone is down. All the apostles in that area, and the mayor and his people. SSF are rushing the defenses. Maybe we'll get the mayor out after all. What bothers me more is that after supposedly achieving what they want, they would now plan to leave them all at all with the mayor. The place is more or less crippled. The mayor is their best defense, their shield. If they just hid out in a building somewhere in the mall complex, SSF might have taken hours to find them, but instead they planned all along to leave. Why? Helen, I get your point. It's been bothering me for quite a while too. And they spent a lot of time setting this up. Maybe crippling the place was not enough. Maybe I'm about to go up and smoke with the building, the mayor, and everyone else still here. Daniela. I know what I have to do, Adam. Whether the SSF want to hear from me or not, I'm gonna... I'm gonna warn them by radio. Then I'm heading to the Apostles' marshalling area. One way or another, I'll get the mayor and myself out of here. Before the place goes. Or I'll die trying. Wish me luck. This is WRAT, AM 1700. The Rat. It's 4.30 in Suiston. I'm Lana Zhang. Here at WRAT, we are still doing our best to bring you updates on what's happening both in and around Suiston and around the world. But with the weather threat looming larger by the moment, and the resulting panic across the city and around the globe, it is increasingly all about how we are coping locally. Very difficult to see the larger picture when your house is being torn apart around you. So, be assured, from wherever you're listening, 
that your immediate safety is our priority, but that in order for any of us to see a path to the future beyond the next 24 hours, we will continue to pass on the global perspective. And I'm Adam Marlboro. As Lana says, the immediate threat to all of us in Sewerston at the moment is Hurricane Zulu 11's wrath, which is descending on us with ever-increasing force. The entire city is virtually immobilized in the face of this onslaught, citizens hiding in whatever hole or bunker they can find to escape the devastation. And if you're still hearing us right now, you know exactly what I mean. And you are a survivor. Keep up the fight, and we will strive to keep up the flow of information vital to helping you stay a survivor. I'm Helen Burgess. It has become increasingly clear that there is indeed a larger threat beyond just the immediate dangers apparent in Sewerston at this hour. WRET's field reporter Anne Kelso has uncovered a plot by the radical group of fanatics known as the Apostles of the Apocalypse to steer the world towards its ultimate end, an apocalypse of their own devising. Our meteorologist Gerdrud Schrager has discovered that there are rogue satellites orbiting the globe which were likely placed there by the Apostles as part of this suicidal plot, and that we may have as little as 24 hours before the storms on the planet reach cataclysmic proportions. I understand Gerdrud has an important communication for us from the WRAT Weather Center. Gerdrud, what can you tell us? This is WRAT meteorologist Gerdrud Schrager. Helen, I have been doing some further investigations into the initiatives underway by the PDA to try and terminate operations of the rogue satellites which they believe are responsible for continuing to feed energy into these storms and I have been able to tap into one of their communication feeds. I am not sure which one, the network is a little confusing, and I am not exactly an expert. But they appear to be almost ready to fire upon one of the rogue devices. I'm switching over to their signal. 119er, orbital station in position. Weapons platform reorienting. Target in low Earth orbit, estimated 300 kilometers supersurface. Easily identifiable from here. Symmetric pattern of dark core with cloud swirl at periphery. How many can you see, 119er? We spot eight in present visual, and the largest surrounding spin of the main storm pattern. Whatever they are, they're at the center of the storm, and that core is very large, perhaps 500 kilometers across. Main batteries aligned. Ready for firing. Fire when ready, 119er. Full green light. Repeat. Fire when ready. Affirmative. Firing point to point. Control, we have returned fire. Repeat. Target is returning fire. Defensive shields at full. We... One one niner. One one niner, are you there? It appears that M. Kelso's intercepted signal from the Apostles was accurate, Helen. Whatever these rogue devices are, they are not defenseless. Let us hope that Anne is more successful in her mission than the PDA seem to be, or that the PDA can find a more effective approach. Back to you, Helen. Certainly all our lives are in the hands of the PDA and our own Anne Kelso, Gerdred. We've not heard from Anne since the attack she took from building Sonics, but she was on her way to the control center that hopefully manages operations of the rogue satellites that are feeding the storms. If we could send you any immediate help, we would, Anne. But for now, all we can do is keep you in our thoughts and wish you luck. That goes for all of us, Helen. Rick Allen is still on the streets, trying to make his way back to the WRAT garage. I imagine things are extremely wild out there at this point, Rick. Understatement, Adam. I'm still about five kilometers from the garage, and under normal conditions, that would be less than five minutes of driving. But all we're shot in Hampton has turned into a battle zone, and now we're stuck in the middle of it. Looks like one or more model citizens tried to smash their way through the traffic and created a path of destruction in their wake. 
ending in a massive pileup right at the center of the intersection here. At least 10 hovers, all one big heap of twisted, burning metal. And all around that, a whole lot of angry, terrified, and completely irrational people succumbing to their baser instincts with whatever weapon they happen to have handy. Anything from fists to shovels to guns. Is there any way around it, Rick? Or through? Remembering I have a terrified family following me, I can't use my usual tactics. Normally I'd just fly evasive maneuvers through the mess. But there are so many other hovers pulling reckless branding stunts above the carnage. So many piles of debris just getting thrown about everywhere by the winds. I don't think Danica can navigate through the way I might be able to. Rick, what's going on in the skies now? We were told that there might be hovers shut down after the curfew. No need for that, Lana. Nothing can stay up there anymore. Everyone's down one way or another. And unfortunately, most are the other. The hard deck is littered with flying metal. Wreckage. Nothing more. Rick, how are we going to get through this? Danica, I'm going to force a path through that noble store on the right. Stay back about 10 meters, but stay on my tail. Once others see what I'm doing, they'll be following. On your tail, Rick. Get us out of here. Rick, are you doing what I think you are? Takes me back to my old Air Force days, Adam. It's going to get a little noisy, and I'll need to focus on my shooting. That's the only way I can see out of this madness. I'll call you back once we're clear. Here goes. And in two of our Sumiston sporting venues, trapped fans are in their own struggle for survival. I'll turn it over to Oliver for an update. Lana, the situation at both Causeway Stadium and the Underworld Heat has certainly not improved in the last half hour. We go first to Clarice Porter at Causeway. Clarice, I understand you are battling some kind of breach. Oliver, the walls have been breached. In many places I've been in level since we last spoke. The waves have breached the stadium and... I'm slipping! Oh God, I'm slipping! He's pulling me back! Hold on! I got you! Carl, help me with it! Grab my hand. I'll pull you up. Thank you. Wherever you are. I was going down too soon. We're okay now. Just go on ahead. We'll be right behind you. It's more like this since the ocean came in. Grand level, Oliver. Carl and Les is a blocker for the Mars. Most people will know him better as Bongo. I mean, he's been helping me through the final sweep of the main floor of the stadium, getting everyone still alive up to the second level. The water's totally wild, and we've only partial protection from the winds. But so far, we've managed to keep most people alive. Keep your heads, Clarice, and stay alive. All of you are heroes already. I'd like to have a chance to say that to you in person. Doing our best, Oliver. I'll take your five. Get this still here. Stop. Wait for me. I know Causeway Stadium is not the only place where Sewston citizens are struggling to stay alive in this storm, but I do think that they give inspiration to all of us, literally trying to keep our heads above water in this crisis. Apparently, things have not been going swimmingly at the Underworld Heap either. John Horton is on the line with the report. John? It was all going very well up until about ten minutes ago, Oliver. When a group of people we've since identified as Pyro supporters decided they'd had enough of being confined with so many Thrasher's fans, they broke up some of the seating by putting the boots to them, started using the pieces as clubs. They laid a few Thrasher's fans and even a couple of more reasonable Pyro's fans on their backs before the closest moving team patrol got there. And did the players have to use their weapons? I hear firing in the background. They tried a little brute force at first, but by the time they got there, the seeds of violence had been sown, and pockets of fighting had begun to break out all over the place. A true cascade effect. So the players switched to weapons hot, stun only, 
and defuse the Oak Ridge in seconds. Once they drop the initial instigators, the rest back down. Now the same is happening throughout the heap. Some of the bands have even made it down to the arena, and the teams have sent squads in to hunt them down and subdue them. Sounds like a live fire reality show, John. Do you think it will get out of control? As far as I can see, the teams have it well in hand, Oliver. We will continue to keep these fans alive in spite of themselves. And thanks to Banshee, who organized the patrol teams and set up the squads. She's not only winning to that leading the thrashers, she's doing it for two teams at once. Hey there, back off. I said, back off. And also thanks to her, I'm packing my own nerve gun. I expect things to be settled down by the time we check in again, Oliver. Unless the building succumbs to the weather. Thanks, John. And try to keep the number of frags to a minimum. Of course, Oliver. Of course. Back to you, Lana.